from my, my sons that are back in Daytona Beach, Florida. And uh, man, if you didn't know this, uh, staying at home is kind of good for education. My kids' grades went from A's and B's to straight A's. You know why? Because we were there like, ah! How many of y'all have, have beat your kids a few extra times? I'm just kidding. Don't, don't. So <laughs> but it's been so amazing being together as family, even though there's been hard times and difficulties. How many of y'all know God is good? He has never failed, nor will he ever fail. And he has consistently been there for us through every obstacle. And I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Jamie and Kim Gardner and this entire church staff has worked so hard to make sure that we could be here together today. Isn't that great? Um, while you're looking up Acts chapter 1, in your bulletin, there is a description. You can pull it out. Of, it's called a product order form. This just helps us simplify you getting some of the ministry material that we have for you. For instance, um, we have a, a DVD series back there called Empire Strikes Back. You can get that. Uh, all about singing victory when it seems like everything's against you. We also have our book Undefeated back there. You can get that. It's going to be at the exits as you leave. I'll explain in a moment. You can get a copy of the book. You can get our t-shirts. Now, these are not normal shirts. These shirts are COVID killing shirts. That's right. Because we believe anything that tries to stop us from getting together needs to be killed. So here's what we got. We got a shirt that says, all I need is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And on the back it says, and some toilet paper. How many of y'all need a shirt that says, all I need is Jesus? And on the back it says, and some toilet paper. I love that shirt. Um, I've witnessed to people at the grocery store standing six feet apart, believe it or not, because I was wearing a t-shirt. They're like, oh, I like that shirt. I'm like, oh, you, you'll like my Jesus even more. Let me tell you about Jesus. It's so much fun. You can get that. And then my favorite is the one that says prayer kills COVID-19. I love that. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from wicked ways, he said, I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. That scripture's on the back. We know that God is in control. So if you want any of those things, you can fill it out on the form. As you leave, all you do is hand that form out of the window. And we hand those items into your window. And then you give us all your money. We give it to Jesus. And then you go home. Oh, hallelujah. That's good. <laughs> I didn't hear any honking on that one. <laughs> Acts chapter 1. If you're ready for the word of God, somebody honk their horn. You know, Pastor Jamie, I forgot. It's really hard to do a thumbprint scanner on your iPad when you have gloves on. Did y'all ever try that? That doesn't work. Look, that, that, is it okay if I punch, I'll punch in the coat. There we go. It worked. It worked. Hallelujah. Acts chapter one, verse one. Actually, let's go to verse four. And being assembled with his disciples, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the father. Which, he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they come together, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has set or put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. In Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Oh, this is good. Father, I pray this morning that, Lord, in the time that we have, you would supernaturally impart power upon your people. Transform us, Lord, from inside our car to outside our world. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. <laughs> this is good. I want to talk for a few moments today about the power that God has that he wants to give to you. The power that God has that he wants to give to you. I remember 
when I was first impacted by the Holy Spirit. At eight years old in April 1980, don't do no math, stop. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I was eight years old and I'll never forget that the moment I walked in that room, the back room and prayed with Pastor Starlin Washington in Grand Rapids, Michigan, my life was never the same. That day, the Holy Spirit came and dwelled inside of me. In fact, the scripture says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead began to dwell inside of me. The spirit of God mixed with my spirit transformed me. It was amazing. Eight years later, lean over to somebody in your car and say eight years later. If nobody's in your car, text somebody and say eight years later. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you the difference between Alan at eight and Alan at 16. Alan at eight was in love with Jesus. Alan at eight wanted to do right by Jesus. Alan at eight years old still did try to steal a bit of honey candy bar from the A&P grocery store and got three whoopings. You ever gotten three whoopings for one sin? <laughs> I got whooped, get this, I got whooped in the store by my mama I got whooped by the store manager at the AMP while my mom watched. Then I got whooped at home by my dad for making my mom whoop me at school. I mean, at, at, at the store. It was unbelievable. I needed it. I was bad as a mug. But I'll never forget at 16 how things changed. L let me explain. Before I can even talk about this power I got to explain the transformation and what it meant to me. You see, the power of the Holy Spirit that is talked about in Acts is not just any power. It's power to do something that we could not do without God's help. It's the power to be a witness. It's the power to transform lives and communities. It's the power to take your digital small group and turn it into a world radicalized revival let me explain in a few weeks we're going to get back together as a church on pentecost sunday pentecost what is pentecost really simple pentecost is 50 50 days after jesus resurrected and 10 days after he ascended into heaven the disciples gathered together for a feast <laughs> I like feasts. Have you noticed? I got my COVID-15 pounds on right now. The church back then had feasts, and they had three annual feasts. Each one of the feasts celebrated different things. Pentecost feast was about the giving of the law and the spring harvest of food that would come in through farming. And they would have this great feast. During that time, the disciples were hanging out together in a room set aside for their gathering. And during that meeting, time together, all of a sudden, there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. The Bible says that it filled the whole house where they were seating. And cloven tongues appeared as a fire over the heads of each of them. And they all were baptized in the Holy Spirit and began to speak in languages they'd never before studied. Around them in the city of Jerusalem, below that window, were God-fearing Jews, devout Jews from all over the world that had come to Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost, the, 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 the feast of Pentecost. They all heard the gospel in their native languages from countries all over the world. Everyone heard the gospel being preached in their own language. Jesus prophesied and told the disciples this day would come and I've come to tell you that your day has come I've come to tell you that your minute has come I've come to tell you there's power available to you not just to make you radically spiritual but to make you supernaturally effectual where you and I will be better than before with power <clears throat> what kind of power are you talking about let's dig into it the Bible says once the disciples were baptized in the Holy Spirit, instantly when they preached, thousands were influenced. At John chapter 16 verse 8 says the Holy Spirit will convict the world in regards to sin and righteousness and the judgment that is to come. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. 
I also noted that Paul said that when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, that it is a sign to the unbeliever. It's also praying in relationship with God in a fire, if I could say it like this, a, a fireside chat with the Spirit, the Son, and the Father. Where you're literally praying within the person of the Trinity of God. That's pretty cool. You ever wanted to pray the will of God? Have you ever prayed the wrong prayer? I have. Oh God, give me that girl in math class. She is so fine, Jesus. I need that little red-headed girl in my life. I am so grateful God did not give me what I prayed for. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But what a wasted prayer that was, right? When you pray in the Spirit, you're not wasting your breath or your prayers. You're praying right within as the Spirit gives you what to pray, and you're praying the will of God in relationship with God for God to do great things in and through our lives. Wow, I, I, I'll never forget my transformation. Eight-year-old Alan was Baptist, in case you didn't know. And eight-year-old Alan became an E.E. -E trainer by 12. Eight-year-old Alan would go to the A&P grocery store after I stole from it, and I would share Jesus with people with my dad in the parking lot, just like this. We would walk people to their cars. I would push the cart and put the groceries in their car, and my daddy would say, Alan, yes, daddy. This is my son, Alan. I want to introduce you to him. He has something God wants you to know. And I look at him, I say, Jesus saved me. Not long ago, I stole stuff from this store and I got a whooping. But Jesus forgave me. And I'm a, I, I'm a Christian now and I'm going to heaven and I want you to go to heaven too. And the people would look at me and they look at my dad and they'd see that we were serious. And my dad and I would hold hands with them in the parking lot of the grocery store and lead people to Jesus. We did it every week. It seemed like for six or eight months, we were at the grocery store every week. That was the six, that was the eight-year-old Alan all the way up to the 12-year-old Alan. The difference was, I used to walk up to people and try to convince them of Jesus, convince them of their need for forgiveness. I would ask questions like, if you were to die right now, would you go to heaven or hell? <laughs> I thought that it was my job to convict the world. But 16-year-old Alan walked in something different. 16-year-old Alan received power. And when I received the power of the Holy Spirit, here's what you need to know about the Holy Spirit. He's not here to change your personality. Uh-uh. He's going to add power to your personality. Why? Because God made your personality. God made you the way you are. God doesn't want to change that. God only wants to add power to who he made you to be. So if you're loud like me, you're going to stay loud. You're just going to be loud with power. If you're quiet, like my wife, my little pookie, she's so quiet, you're just going to stay quiet, but you're going to be quiet with power. What kind of power? Remember, John chapter 16, verse 8, the power to be a witness. And, and, and the Spirit says, the convict the world, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will convict the world in regards to sin and righteousness and the judgment that is to come. So the 16-year-old Alan found a new place to witness, because I didn't want to be outside in Michigan in the winter. So I went to the mall, the Woodland Mall, and I would walk around the Woodland Mall, 16 year old Alan, and I walk up to people and go, hey, my name is Alan, and I just want to let you know, God loves you. And I'd share him like a 10 second, 30 second testimony. Man, I used to struggle with anger. And I used to be so hurt over what, what happened to my brothers. Both of them have gone through some really difficult things, but God has given me the strength to overcome it. And you know what? I feel like I need to pray for you right now, that your relationship with God will get better. I would say the nicest, kindest things to people. And this is their reaction. <laughs> I need Jesus! It was amazing. Thanks for that horn. It was incredible. Do you know what the difference was? I was no longer trying to convince people. Don't blame this on the Baptists. The blame is on me. I was no longer trying to, to convince people they were sinners. I was no longer trying to talk people into their faith. 
All I was doing was telling my story, telling my testimony, and the Holy Spirit did all the sales. He convicted them of sin. He corrected them when they needed it. He did all the work, and I got out of the way. Why? Because God gave me the power to step back and tell the truth. And the Bible says when you tell them the truth, the truth will make men, women, and children free. Free of sin free of the lie, free of the bondage, free of the hopelessness, free of them thinking there's no way God loves me, free of that thinking that binds them to lies. I'm telling you the truth today. Power has come to praise. It's been here all along, but now we're going to walk in it in a new way. We're going to walk in it in a new dimension, and God's going to use you, my friends, to transform our community. The low country will be transformed by the power of God's spirit. I gotta hurry up. I, I, I do, I do, I do, I do. Uh, let's talk real quick, real quick about how we receive it. At 16 years old, I received it. How can we receive more power than we ever have before? How? There's just a couple things you need to understand. First, you must understand that the disciples didn't always understand it. In scripture, Jesus sent the 12 out and the 12 went out to preach and to heal people, and they did. These 12 were intimate with Jesus. They were close to Jesus. They understood a little bit more of Jesus. But then when Jesus sent out 72 of his disciples to go preach and to cast out demons and to heal people, they came back going, Woo! We are something. Look at us. We are changing our world. We're casting out demons. We are casting out. I, I, I grabbed one demon, lifted him up, punched him in the face. He was like, <laughs> I punched him again. I said, go to, go to hell, devil. And Jesus is sitting there the whole time. Can I transliterate this? Jesus is sitting there the whole time like this. Mm -hmm. These poor kids. These women, these men out there slaying demons, they don't understand. Jesus said, don't be happy that demons are subject to you. This ain't about demons. Be excited that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let me transliterate that. Let me help you understand what Jesus was saying. He was saying this, it's one thing to take something evil out of a person, but it's way more important of what goes into that person. And what we need is the Holy Spirit to come into us and make us new. When we're saved, the Holy Spirit comes in. But when we're baptized, the Holy Spirit surrounds. I can't wait to go back to the beach. Now, listen, I know a lot of people already went to the beach. I have not been to the beach yet, okay? The reason is I've been doing food distribution in my community, and every time my little delicate body goes outside, I get sunburned. That's right, black people sunburn, y'all. My milk chocolate turned to dark chocolate, then it turned to, to dark chocolate with like red splotches. So I have to wait to go to the beach. I gotta get, you know, conditioned for the beach. But one of the things I love is jumping in the water and that feeling of just being surrounded by water and the peace that you feel when you're in that water. That's why everybody's fighting to get back to the beach because that water is amazing. It feels like life is around you, not just sharks. But you know, it's one thing to drink water. It's another thing to be immersed in water. Jesus talking about baptism, what he's saying is this, what goes into you is the Holy Spirit. But if you're baptized the Holy Spirit and the power that you receive is an immersion in the things of the Spirit. It's one thing to have something inside of you. It's another thing to be surrounded by it. And the power and the peace and the joy that comes from it is immeasurable. How do we get it? Very simple. Intimacy with God leads to integrity. Integrity with God leads to authority. And after you have authority, you get power. And you only get power to affect world domination. See, eight-year-old Alan was out there just trying to do my spiritual duty. 16-year-old Alan wants to slay all sin in the world and see the world transform. After I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, 
I prayed the sinner's prayer with a thousand people over three months. I went person to person. I was tireless. I was relentless. I was excited. I was even a little weird. Because after a while, I'd be like listening to the Spirit, and the Spirit would tell me stuff, and then I would just say it in a weird way. You ever meet somebody who's weird, and they think weird is spiritual? For a minute, I got weird. When you're when you're a little bit less spiritually mature, you get weird when the Spirit talks to you. So I'd walk up to people, I'd be like, I feel like God is talking to me about you. <laughs> and then I realized, it doesn't take all that. God will speak to you, and he'll speak to you in such a calm voice, such a peace voice. And then it's up to you about what you do with it. It's up to you about how you respond to him. At first, I was a little immature, but I figured this thing out a little bit. That my intimacy with God, that means a relationship with God. If you don't have one, we're going to pray and yours can start today. It led to integrity. I started to walk and live what I believed. And then the integrity led to authority. So that when I prayed and when I ministered, I had the authority of God behind me. That's what the disciples had. When they went out, they cast out demons. They had authority. They healed people. They had authority. But then came power. And power, my friends, is not for us to possess it's for us to be used I know a lot of people that pray in the spirit that talk in tongues if you will but that doesn't mean they have power because power is nothing if it's unused it's nothing it's just a gift until it's used there's a lot of people out here and I'm gonna be real with you I'm not usually real, but I'm in a parking lot right now. You have talents and abilities you have not used for God. Now is the time to use them. No one will witness the power of God if you don't use it to love them, to help them, to serve them, to reach them, to bless them, to heal them, to cast out demons if you have to. If you use it to tithe, come on somebody. That's when the world knows that we're believers. That's when the world knows the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we're actually doing something. If there's no difference, I'm just going to preach. In your life, before you were baptized in the Holy Spirit, to after, you've been denying the power. And it's time for us to open our big fat mouths, at least my big fat mouth, <laughs> and tell people about the love of God. Even if I got to stand 10 feet away from you, the power is still here. Okay, so let's, let's, let's land the plane. How did you receive, Al, and how can I receive more power from God? Really simple. Just a couple of things. Number one, everybody say this in your car. Say it to your neighbor. You can elbow your neighbor right now. You can kiss your husband or your wife. I don't care. But after that, say this. Ask. Mm -hmm. I can't hear you up here. I said ask. That's good. That's good. That's good. Then wait. Then wait. Be willing. Number four is work it. Okay, so what are they? Ask. Wait. Be willing. And then, I can't hear you. Open your window and somebody say it. Very good. Very good. Here's what happened. I was walking back and forth in my cafeteria at my high school, and I was praying for my friends and myself. And when I was praying, I said, God, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want the power you talked about in Scripture. I want the power to be a witness. I want the power that your Holy Spirit will convict the world in regards to sin and righteousness and the judgment that is to come. I want the power that allows me to pray in the perfect will of God. I want that power in my life. I want to be in a place of intimacy that leads to integrity, that leads to authority. And then I want to walk in power so that the world will be shifted and transform as I reach out God I want that and it was amazing because I was walking back and forth and I didn't feel anything different but I heard God speak to me he said hey Al buh buh I said buh I was like cool buh I'm going to say what God told me to say buh I just kept saying buh because that's all I got. 
I heard that when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit to read the scripture, that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And whatever he speaks to you, he wants you to say it. He wants you to speak by faith. I was like, man, this is good. I'm hearing from God. Buh, buh, buh. I had no clue the power that had come upon my life. When I walked out of that cafeteria, two of my friends walked up to me the same day and they go, what happened? I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. They're like, something's different. Something's different about you. What, what, what happened? I said, I don't know, man. I'm just, just, I was praying and I got some buh. They said, you got some buh. What's that? I said, watch this. When I pray, I say buh now. God gave me some words to pray. And I'm like, buh, 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 buh. It was really cool. They made fun of me. They called me a black sheep. That's true, man. My best friends. But they were baptized in the Holy Spirit as well. Just days later, our lives were changed because we waited. We asked first, but we waited and we were willing to speak and do whatever God told us to speak and do. And then we were ready for the power and we just kept saying what God gave us. You know, I said buh for two weeks, that's all I got. But weeks later, I got la and I said bala, bala, bala. I said that for another five or six weeks. And then God gave me all kinds of stuff to pray and to say. Huh. The most important thing is not that I prayed in tongues or I prayed in the spirit. The most important thing is that I was seeking after God for more. I wasn't satisfied with what I had. If you're satisfied, you'll never stretch. I wasn't satisfied. I wanted more. And when I asked him, he said, okay. Buh. Can I trust you with two syllables, you loud mouth little boy? And after I spoke it, man, you won't believe the shift in my life. The way I looked at people was different. I didn't even look at girls the same way. I used to look at girls like, ooh, I'd like to kiss a girl. Ooh, that's a girl. I now was going, I wonder if she's okay. I wonder if her family's all right. God, what would you like me to say to her? I, I want to do something to help that family. My perceptions shifted because I wanted more and the more was the power to share and love people for Jesus. Maybe you're in your car right now. Maybe you're watching us on a recording or maybe right now you're at home. Maybe you're in the laundry. Maybe you're across the road at the liquor store. Maybe you're just walking by and you're listening and you're going, does God love me? Does God want me? Let me tell you something. If God can take an eight-year-old little brat who stole candy from a grocery store and a month later put him back in that parking lot, delivering people's groceries and praying for them and seeing miracles in their life, he can use anybody. And he doesn't just use anybody, he uses everybody. He loves you. He wants you. He cares about you. You are precious to him. He loves you so much. Would you like to start an intimacy with God, a relationship with the one person who created the world, who loves you so much that his own son died on the cross for us so that we can be forgiven and not just have a relationship on earth, but have an eternity of relationship with him. If that's you, you're like, man, I need that. I want a relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you let your relationship fall off and you want to restart that relationship. When I count to three, I'm not going to make you get out of your car. I'm going to make you take your right hand and put it over your heart because we're going to pray together. Are you ready? You say, I want I want to pray that prayer. I want to start a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want that in my life, and I want the power that goes with it. When I count to three, take your right hand, put it over your heart. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, here we go. Three, put your hand over your heart. Say this prayer loud with me. Don't be afraid. You don't have to yell it. Just speak it out loud. Everyone who prayed in the Bible prays out loud, so let's pray out loud. Say, Jesus, say, dear Jesus, I need your forgiveness. I've messed up and you died for me and you rose again for me. I need your forgiveness to take away my sin. 
I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says that if you meant that prayer, you don't have to write the prayer to mean the prayer. But if you meant that prayer, that your relationship with Jesus has begun. And get this, power.